What's that? All right. <clears throat> I'm going to call the meeting to order. For those of you who are willing and able, please stand and join me in a pledge of allegiance to the flag. It's over there. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. I'd like to take this moment to introduce the Reverend Diane Wong, the rector of St. John's Episcopal Church on Pleasant Street. Reverend? Good evening. I want to thank Mr. John Leone for inviting me here tonight. Now I invite all of us to pray. And in our prayer for tonight's meeting, let us first give thanks. God of love and wisdom, we give thanks to everyone here tonight, to all of you who put yourselves in potential risk in order to exercise your leadership for the town of Arlington, for your enduring commitment to serve Arlington during these challenging times, for the well-being of those who live here. We give thanks to all the residents in Arlington who in the past three months have been helping strangers and friends alike to adjust to and cope with the unexpected disruption, disruptions in our daily lives in every possible way. Grocery shopping, cooking meals, and offering financial assistance. We give thanks to the students of Arlington who every evening in the past few weeks lead the protest at the center against police violence and racial injustice, calling for change and equality now in our society. We give thanks for all the good and kindness that we encounter every day. And I ask us to pray that we continue to do our best to see strangers as neighbors and continue to love our neighbors as ourselves, extending ourselves to, to those in need. That we continue to be intentional in overcoming the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts and do our best to bring down walls that separate us and treat one another with respect and kindness. That we follow the examples of our young people and speak out against hatred, bigotry, and violence and not be silent and complicit and work for justice and peace and equality that all of us, especially you, the leaders and officials of Arlington, will lead and empower people in this town to embrace brave change for the present and future of Arlington. So everyone who lives here can call Arlington ho home. And in the spirit that is love, amen. Thank, thank you, Dr. Wong. Appreciate it. <clears throat> One thing, apparently when we're at the microphone, you can take your mask off, but put it back on when you're done. Good evening, and welcome to the 2020 Annual Town Meeting, Arlington's 214th, our 84th as a representative town meeting, and what I believe is the first town meeting held out of doors. I'd like to take the opportunity to welcome our new town clerk, Julie Brazil. Our new select board member, Len Diggins. Our new school committee member, Elizabeth Paxton. <clears throat> and new housing, housing Authority board member, Joanne Preston. 
and congratulations to all the other incumbents on their re-election. I wish to express my thanks to the town clerk's office staff for keeping the office running these past 10 months and for doing an admirable job of pulling off this difficult election under trying circumstances. They did a great job. Thank you. This year is different for a number of reasons. The pandemic, financial articles alone, no electronic voting, internet or video presentations. Another significant difference is that the select board staff has mailed you all a packet of printed information. You all receive that. A round of applause for Fran, Ashley and Lauren who went into the office these past couple days, put those together and mailed them out to all of us. As you know, it's been my goal to eliminate paper these last few years. Next year's town meeting, we're gonna go back on that path and eliminate paper altogether and use, go back to electronic distribution of materials. So I'm, I'm still fighting that fight, it's gonna happen. Procedural guidance, we followed the bylaws of the town and the principles set out in town meeting time. Out of consideration to your fellow members and to follow the full debate and to allow full debate and please keep your remarks as concise and brief as possible. Please heed our seven minute speaking time. This is especially true this year. If it has been said once, don't say it again. We don't have to hear it twice. We do have our nifty timer. Dave, Dave Good was able to rig that up for me. How will we vote? I figure a lot of you have never voted without clickers. So we've got to have a little primer. Just like the old days, after debate, I'll confirm that we're ready to vote, I'll clarify what we are voting on, and then I'll proceed to take the vote. It'll be by voice. First I'll call for yes votes, then I'll call for the no votes, then I'll make a, a determination, I'll declare the votes, whether I think it's a yes or no. If five or more town meeting members don't believe that I got it right, please rise, then we'll do standing votes with tellers. I'll appoint tellers for every row. The teller will walk front to the back, count everybody, and report back to me in the front. Ms. Brazil and I will add it up, and we'll give you what the tally is. If you have a question at any point in time, yell out a point of order. If you're confused upon what we're, about what we're voting on, yell out a point of order. I will recognize you. We are using two consent agendas this year. As you can see, they're very large. The first will dispose of all non-financial articles. I have corresponded with or spoken to all of the proponents of citizen articles. Their articles will be back at our next town meeting. They did not object to the articles being put off due to the safety concerns and considerations of COVID-19 truncated town meeting. On our behalf, I wanna thank all of them for their courtesies and patience with me in asking them to do that. The second, oh. <laughs> the second consent, consent agenda is for the usual housekeeping FinCom budget articles that we approve every year, usually without any debate. Both have been widely circulated. You receive them in your packet and they've been posted to the town website for at least the past week. We'll take the first consent, consent agenda item at the very beginning of the meeting and we'll take up the last at the end of the meeting. When we reach debate, we'll be acting and debating just as we would if we had been in town hall. When I call an article, raise your hand, be patient, we will see you, and, and I will call upon you. Just because we're outside, gathered in the midst of a global pandemic, does not mean that we cannot have a full and fair debate on the articles before us. Now, I'd like to ask you all to stand for a moment of silence for all Arlingtonians who are no longer with us. For our men and women in uniform all over the world, for the heroes of the front line of the many battles we wage today, the teachers, grocery clerks, healthcare workers, mail carriers, and delivery people on the front lines of the battle of COVID-19. And for the social activists who are engaged in the fight for equality, liberty, and justice for all, and for our fellow citizens who have made the ultimate sacrifice in the name of our country, in the name of equity, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Now we're going to swear in any new town meeting members. We're only going to do one, one swear in, so if you are a new re-elected town meeting member or a new town meeting member, please rise. Wow, a lot of you, good. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me using your own name. I will participate fully and will fairly evaluate all matters before town meeting and vote in the best interest of the town. I support free speech and will treat others with mutual respect and will conduct myself in a civil manner that is becoming of an elected town meeting member. I do, solemn, I do solemnly swear that I'll faithfully and impartially perform the duties incumbent upon me as a town meeting member of the town of Arlington in accordance with the bylaws, the Town Manager Act, and the general laws of the Commonwealth, so help me God. Congratulations, old and new. I recognize the chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It is requested that the members of the select board and elected officials of the town, town managers, department heads of the town and staff superintendent of schools and staff, committees, commissions, and boards of the town, Minuteman Regional Vocational Technical School District Committee and superintendent members of the Electronic Voting Committee and staff members of the General Court representing Arlington, and also any consultants who have been retained to work for the town relative to articles to be acted on by this meeting and representatives of the news media be permitted to sit within the town meeting enclosure. A second. All in favor, please say yes. yes. All opposed? Say yes, vote, and I'd say declare it. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Constable's return. Madam Clerk, do you have reason to believe that this meeting was appropriately called by the select board and that the constable made a return of service on the warrant in accordance with the bylaws? She affirms yes. Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It is moved that if all the business of the meeting as set forth in the warrant for the annual town meeting is not disposed of at this session, when the meeting adjourns, it adjourns to Wednesday, June 17th, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. Second. Second, all in favor, please say yes. Opposed? Okay, it's a yes vote, and I so declare it. <laughs> um, any announcements or resolutions? Seeing none. That brings us to Article 3, Reports of Committees. I move that the report of the Finance Committee be received. All in favor? It is so received. I wish to just take a few seconds with you. Most of you got the three corrections for the Finance Committee report. Uh, it was on the website. Um, unfortunately, it happened about a half hour after we <coughs> went to print. On page, but if you did not, on page 17 of the Finance Committee report, Page 17, Article 58. Capital, cable capital, 125,285 should be 125,735. Page 19. 
Article 62. Voted that the sum of, it has 93,835, that should be 88,835. Article 62, page 19, voted that the sum of 88,835. And the final one is on page 20. Article 63, that the sum of, and it has 15,000, 167 should be 10,167. 10,167. So if you could make those corrections, and Objection. Mr. Moderator, can those be administratively changed? We'll, we'll make all those administratively, so go ahead and please correct your votes. We'll have no books, we'll have no further votes on those. Thank you, Mr. Tosti. Press the button on the um, the on the thick part of the shaft. There's a button. Test. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that the report of the select board be received. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. So received. Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Moderator Eric Helmuth, uh, Chair of the CPA Committee. I move that the report of the Community Preservation Act Committee be received. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's so received. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Timur Yantar, Chair of the Capital Planning Committee. I move that the report of the Capital Planning Committee be received. All in favor of receiving the capital planning report, please say yes. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, is Andy want to come down and do it? Yeah, give ARB a second to come on down. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Andrew Bunnell, Arlington New Development Board. I move that the report of the ARB be received. All in favor, please say yes. yes. Opposed? It is so received. Thank you, Mr. Bunnell. Any other reports? Seeing none. I move that the recommended votes contained in the respective reports of the Finance Committee, Select Board, Redevelopment Board, and CPA Committee uh, be before the meeting without further motion. All in favor, please say yes. yes. Opposed? It is a vote and I so declare it. Okay. I move that Article 3 and Article 48 through 77 be laid upon the table. All in favor of laying Article 3 and 48 through 77 upon the table, please say yes. yes. Opposed? Okay. That's going to bring us to the Consent Agenda 1. Oh, yes. Gosh. I'm so excited to get going. <laughs> um, every year we appoint the measure of wooden bark under Article 4. It's a traditional colonial era appointment, but it's necessary if someone has a, a issue. It's cl traditional colonial era appointment. If someone has a issue or cons with a cord of wood or a yard of bark, they will call the measure of wooden bark, and he or she will come down and measure that up for you and tell you if they are, in fact, 
short or if you've got what you've paid, what you've paid for. Um, currently, Mr. Warden is our measurer of wooden bark. I would like to reappoint him for one more year with the consent of the meeting. All in favor, please say yes. yes. Any opposed? Thank you very much. That brings, closes Article 4 and brings us to Article 5. I hope it wasn't too strenuous last year, Mr. Warden. Um, <clears throat> the Assistant Town Moderator. Do I have any nominations for Assistant Town Moderator? Ms. Huen. Donna Wren, Precinct 10. I nominate James O'Connor. Do we have any other nominations? Seeing none, I direct Madam Clerk to put one vote in the record for Mr. O'Connor. Congratulations, Mr. O'Connor. You've got another job for another year. Now that will bring us to the consent agenda. Article 6. I'm going to read through every article. Um, there's 68 of them. So it's going to take me a minute. Uh, if you object or you wish to have an article removed, please raise your hand and yell out hold. But I'm going to make one comment. Unless we have a substitute motion, which we have none, we're not going to discuss any article just because it's removed from the consent agenda. It will merely, merely take its place in the regular vote for no action vote. Okay. So I'm going to start. If you have an objection or you want something removed, yell hold. Article 7. Do you have a substitute motion, sir? Then why are you taking it off? We're not going to discuss it. All right, I'm taking it off. In your name, sir? Mr. Michaelman, okay. Sir? Mr. Deist? What point do you rise? Now take the mic. In some instances, uh, I would like to have had debate. For example, I would like to have learned more about this article. Uh, I, I don't know what to do in the, in the situation of the uh, con consent agenda or non-consent agenda. Uh, is there any way that uh, one can... The only thing I can do, I guess, is uh, uh, vote a substitute motion. Is that correct? Well, if you wanted to vote a substitute motion, we would have had to receive that by last Friday at 11 a.m. Yeah. You understand that we are in the midst of a pandemic and that the selectmen have voted no action on all of these articles. If they wanted to go forward with the article, they would have had debate on it, and we would have been – basically, we're doing financial articles. Yeah, we're going to do it at our next fall, at our next town meeting. All of these articles will come up again. All the citizen zoning articles, um, Mr. Schlickman's uplighting article. Please, it's yours, wasn't it, Paul? Yes, Mr. Schlickman's uplighting article, and every will come back in the fall. We will fully debate them. Yeah. Yes, you're welcome. That being said, Mr. Michaelman, do you still want it to be held? It's going to be a no action vote. Okay, thank you. Article 8. He said he's rescinding his hold. I'm sorry. I have to learn to repeat. This is a little odd for me. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Come on up, take the mic, introduce yourself. Name and precinct for the record. Sherry. Sherry Barron, Precinct 7. I, I'm wondering if everyone understands, I don't exactly, about the consent agenda. Are you saying that we can put a hold on it now? There's I'll, been I'll no, explain uh, no approval by the board, but it will then come up again as a fresh item in the fall? The, the current plan, as... Um, the ARB agreed and the Board of Selectmen agreed when we first realized we were in this state of affairs 
and we had to hold a town meeting was to use a consent agenda, only address financial articles this year. That means that all of the bylaws, um, uplighting, um, all the zoning bylaws are gonna be put off with the vote of the two boards and I did contact all of the citizen proponents and ask them if it was okay. Our intention is, and the selectmen have agreed and the ARB agreed that all of those articles will appear at the next town meeting that we hold. They'll just come right back as if they were and fresh and new, we'll have So there will be debate. discussion, there'll be There'll a time be for discussion. Full debate then, we'll have full debate with the ARB, we'll have full debate with the selectmen as they do on all the articles. And by the time they get to us here, they'll be fully vetted and we will then be able to debate them as we always do. Thank you. Yeah, we're not trying to push anything under the rug and bury it and hide it forever. I wasn't implying that. No, no, I know, I know, but I, I don't think I made myself, <laughs> ooh, I'm not supposed to touch that. <laughs> I didn't make myself clear. I, I mean, I've been dealing with it for so many weeks now that, oh yeah, this is what you we're doing. It, yeah. uh, you Thank all you, don't Mr. have the Moderator. benefit of my weird thinking. So I'm gonna stand here just so I can see better. Um, article eight, bikeway hours. Nine, canine control. 10, amendments, displays, notices, and fines. Article 11, street performances. 12, stormwater management. 13, fossil fuels. 14, school committee member stipends. 15, residential development. 16, property insurance claims. 17, city, police, seven, police citizen advisory board study committee. 18, Envision Arlington. 19, municipal affordable housing T trust fund. 20, home rule. 21, election modernization. 22, home rule Justin Brown. 23, home rule town meeting member elections, 24, ranked choice voting, 25, rule legislation, finance est estimates, budget documents, 26, home rule legislation, senior water discounts, 27, home rule, retired police officers details, 28, zoning bylaw amendment, commercial to residential, 20, the next several are all zoning, 29, definition of foundation, 30, related open spaces. 31, open foundation excavation. 32, residential inclusiveness sustainability. 33, zoning appeals board. 34, bylaw de de definition mixed use. 35, parking requirements. 36, parking regulations. 37, accessory dwelling units. 38, non-conforming parcel size, 39, upper story setbacks, 40, skyward, side yard sky exposure planes, 41, affordable housing, 42, apartment conversion, 43, reduction in B3 and B5 districts, 44, gross, gross floor area, 45, prohibited uses, 46, demolition and density regulations, 47, Administrative corrections. Okay, these are the next group are all citizen articles. 40, 78, resolution, sustainable energy installation. 79, resolution, track progress of the debt of facilities and maintenance. 80, corridor design competition. 81, registration of organization of town meeting speakers. 82, resolution for collaboration of town government. 83, resolution, formally invite Arlington Housing Representatives to town meeting. I can climb. And that's the end of the consent agenda. I've heard the only one hold that was withdrawn. All in favor of the consent agenda. When we vote the consent agenda, it's gonna be the votes that are reflected in the Board of Selectmen's report with the ARB report. So all in favor of the consent agenda, please say yes. yes. All opposed? It's a unanimous vote and I so declare it. Okay, I gotta go back there.
That will bring us to Mr. Tosti. I move that Article 50 be removed from the table. This is the Selectman's article on community development block grant. All in favor of removing Article 50 from the table, please say yes. Article 50 is on the table. Um, Article 50, endorsement of CDBG. Anyone wish to speak to it? You want to speak to it or not? You don't have to. Nope, he doesn't want to speak to it. You've all got the CDBG budgets. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say yes. Aye. All opposed? It's a unanimous vote, and I so declare it. I move that Article 61 be taken from the table. This is the Minuteman Regional Vocational School District. All in favor of taking Article 61 from the table, please say yes. Aye. Opposed? Article 61 is on the table. You, just, you have before us a recommended vote of the um, Finance Committee of $6,113,371 for Minuteman Regional School Technical High School. Dr. McQuellen is here to address us. Dr. McQuellen? Thank you, and uh, good evening, Arlington Town Meeting members. The uh, proposal has been on the, on the website for a while. I'm not going to reiterate all of it. I do want to hit a couple of high points and um, through the moderator, of course, have any kind of questions or clarifications. Um, this year, our bumper sticker has been managing our success. We were in the new school up until March 15th, our first year in the new school. And I hope you noticed there was a little link to a video of, um, on the, uh, on the, on the uh, presentation where it shows kids coming into the building for the first time. It's a really cool, high energy kind of uh, experience and uh, I look at it often, especially lately. <laughs> um, we've managed our success and we've fulfilled a lot of expectations this year. After a five year effort beginning in 2010, really spearheaded by Al Tosti and other members of Arlington, uh, we voted a new regional agreement in 2016. Later, we also had the state approve a capital fee for non-district communities to help them offset the costs of the new facility. The building was a year ahead of schedule and it is still on budget as we begin the closeout process. And we've experienced a tremendous amount of increased enrollment, mostly from member towns. For the incoming freshman class, in 2020, there'll only be 14 out of district freshmen out of 185. We've already in the fall are projected our enrollment will be beyond the design capacity of the school. The school was designed for 628 students. We'll be enjoying 650 students this fall. There is a waiting list for member and non-member communities. This year's budget was driven by a number of uh, conditions, I guess we'd say, that we're all dealing with right now. We have also are looking at how to uh, adjust this COVID environment in a reduced amount of state aid. Uh, our phrase has been planning for the worst and expecting and hoping for the best. Uh, we've already had to um, lay some people off as of this week for next year. But our assessment of $6.1 million, um, which includes the capital, um, is up from this past year. But enrollment and interest in Minuteman from Arlington has also increased. This past year, we had, I believe, uh, 93 applicants from eighth graders in Arlington. Of those 93, about 80 were completed. 77 students were admitted or offered admission, and as of today, we have 65 students, new ninth graders, coming in to Minuteman uh, from Arlington. We have some challenges going ahead. I think all of us know the obvious ones as we sit outside tonight. Uh, but the withdrawal of some of the towns from the regional district means that fewer members 
are here to share capital and operating expenditures. Belmont will be the no longer a member of the Minuteman School District as of July 1st. And this year, their exit from the, uh, the district has all by itself has increased the assessment to Arlington by about $556,000 alone. Uh, we also have the challenge of trying to uh, learn how to live without out-of-district enrollment tuition revenue. This is what we were asked to do to increase enrollment for member towns, and it's what we've done. But as in the years going forward, we'll not be allowed, we won't have that revenue to utilize to keep um, assessments in line. The other thing that pains my heart, really, is uh, having a waiting list for students from our member towns. Um, it's, it's difficult to explain to parents. It's also nothing I'm going to try to bring up old uh, discussions, but we wanted a bigger school. We were able to get a school of 628, and now it's full with a waiting list. I appreciate the support of Arlington in many ways, from town meeting, of course, but from the Arlington School District, from uh, parents in Arlington that have stepped up to work with us around a very difficult year. We were able to have graduation, a drive-through graduation on June 5th. Um, some of you here, your students were graduated from Minuteman. It wasn't what we expected, but it's what we have. And from a class of students and from a time where we have learned and lost so much, we seem to have found what's important. And it is one another in relationships and providing the best education we can in these difficult times. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. McQuillan. Are there any questions or anyone would like to speak to Minuteman? Seeing none. Oh, where? Oh, I see. Oh, come on up. Is that Miss Memon? Is that Zarina Memon? I think so. Serena Memon, Precinct 21. So thank you very much for that presentation, but I feel like I just missed a few numbers and I just wanted to get that out. Um, so you said there's no out-of-town tuition reimbursement uh, money. How much is that? What, what do you mean with that? What's the, that amount here? Um, on an annual, I can tell you, we're, we still have out-of-district tuition revenue coming in from students who are continuing at Minuteman, sophomores, juniors, and seniors next year. But as the school is filled with our member towns, there's no non-member tuition revenue. Oh, okay. And is it, while you're checking that, is it student number 628 or 650? I've heard both numbers. The school was built to accommodate 628 students, something called a design enrollment. Right. Uh, we've actually projected that this fall we will have 650 students in the school. So you have uh, 23 more or 22 more students. Yes. So you just decided that would be okay. You can tolerate. Yeah, in the MSBA process, the design enrollment assumes an 85% occupancy rate. So we figure we can go 10 to 15% over that oh, okay. and still be able to accommodate the class sizes that we okay. enjoy. Am I supposed I'm to do something no, with this that's button? that's me. I wasn't oh, paying okay. attention. I get nervous when red lights go on. <laughs> so just to answer your question about the amount of uh, non-resident tuition revenue that we collect, um, let me just see. It's in our revenue plan, which is slide 14. I'm sorry, I didn't get It's $3.7 million. Okay. That's good to know. For um, FY21. And then you said you have purpose of, uh, you need the money for the $6,113,371 for the purpose of paying towns apportioned pointed pair uh, share of operating and maintenance costs. Is that the full for the operating? I mean, is that con considered one item or is that like, do you break it down? The assessment. Because it should be a new school, so it should be low maintenance, right? Sorry. Yeah, the $6.1 million is a total assessment. Uh -huh. Includes operating, maintenance, and 
um, capital. Okay. My capital. Okay. So, like, could you give a breakdown on that, or is that too hard to do? Um, slide seven gives you a breakdown of the Arlington assessment. Uh -huh. Uh, 2.1 million is what's called a minimum required contribution. That number is set by the state. Then there's, according to our regional agreement, the delta is in the operating assessment is 2.2 million. Uh, the assessment for transportation is 187,000. Um, existing debt and capital assessment is 200,000. Uh -huh. And then the, the debt service on the building project, which has been excluded, um, is 1.2 three million okay i guess I, i'm not that much of the details on the numbers but i wanted to just hear them one well, last thing i want to know is um this is being raised by general tax so is this full six million plus money being raised from arlington is that what we're saying and if so how much is that um per in per resident are we thinking uh that is the uh, how long that is the assessment amount for arlington yeah i don't know what that is you said per Arlington right. resident. Yeah. I, I don't know what that is. Okay. That's how much someone else maybe. That able six to million is built into your tax rate. Yes. So how much oh. would that go up by the tax rate? That's what I'm asking. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just curious. Yeah. Well, the tax rate set. We have to build that into our total budget, which is capped. Thank you. <laughs> All the right, the and answer was about $120, someone shouted. So that shouted. would be annual for how long, do you think? For 10 years or more? Debt exclusion. To just till debt exclusion, exclusion. Okay, thank you. I'm still not clear on the debt exclusion. So, but that's all right. Hmm. Thank you, Mr. Memon. Anyone else? Thanks. All right, seeing none others, I think we're ready for a vote. All in favor of the six point one six million one hundred. $13,000 for Minuteman, please say yes. yes. All opposed? It's another unanimous vote, and I so declare it. Thank you very much, Dr. Volkwell. We appreciate you coming down on the Thank you very much. I hope to see you at the new school soon. Yeah, good, good job in the new school. Mr. Tosti? Now what we're going to do is first take up town budgets which is Article 53. Then we'll take up the capital budget, which is 54 plus 59 and 60. Those are the water and sewer borrowing articles. And then we're going to take up the CPA, uh, Community Preservation Act Committee, which is Article 67, 66 and 67. So those will follow right after. So I move that we remove Article 53, 54, 59, 60, 66 and 67 from the table. All in favor of removing all of those articles from the table, please say yes. yes. All opposed? 53, 54, 59, 60, 66, and 67 are now on the tables. That brings us to Article 53, Town Budgets. Okay, I, I just want to mention a, f a few things. Um, if you take a look at uh, Appendix D, which is right at the end. It's like the last, second to the last page. Now, hopefully everybody's read the chairman's report uh, with, with great gusto. Um, I went through sort of what's been happening. Uh, Finance Committee had basically finished its work by the middle of March. Uh, and then, as I say in the report, the world as we knew it came to an end. Uh, so there was, a, there was just everything froze. And then there was some discussion, Finance Committee, Long-Term Planning Committee, uh, and we decided to go ahead and move a budget. And so uh, the Long-Term Planning Committee and the Finance Committee basically agreed. So uh, the manager uh, agreed and the school uh, committee agreed to cut 10% of their budgets. Uh, we also went, and this is all on page, actually the last page, Appendix E, uh, so the manager went and he removed uh, all the new positions because this is going to be silly to hire all new, new people and then have to lay them off in six months. So the manager uh, eliminated about uh, uh, 261000 Actually, he cut about 20% of the increase. 
Nobody's getting a decrease. It's just their increase is a little bit less. Uh, so the manager uh, cut his increase by 22%. Superintendent cut her increase by 10%. We eliminated some more. Uh, we uh, cut or shaved some of the Warren articles, uh, a couple of which are simply not needed, and a couple could uh, uh, take a small shaving. And I've talked with everybody about this. Um, and then we proposed uh, setting aside or using some reserve funds uh, to go through this. So uh, we, uh, the manager has been in discussion with many state and other town officials, uh, and he recommended that we, we take the January local aid numbers as presented by the governor, and we cut them 15%. Uh, so this whole budget is based upon that. And uh, if, if he's correct, we'll take credit for it. And if he's wrong, it's his fault, of course. <laughs> uh, on page, on Appendix D, so even though, we, you know, if that's right, we have a balanced budget. Um, if he's wrong, we'll have to make adjustments. But I think probably this is not going away. Um, this is going to be around for a little while, maybe a long time. We don't know. But if you take a look at the projection, the five-year plan, which is sort of the heart and soul of this, uh, we've increased the use of reserve funds uh, from the stabilization fund, from the override stabilization fund, uh, and uh, sorry, from the overlay surplus. And as you could go down the bottom where it says balance, we have a deficit of $17 million in fiscal 24. That jumps up to $24 million in fiscal 25. Now, usually, back of the envelope, if you're looking for a three-year override, you sort of take the middle number as the number that you're going to have to deal with, which is an override of $24 million. Now, if you take that $24 million as a percentage of the property tax above under revenue, you come up with a 16% jump in taxes. Hmm. We've never gone more than 10% and asked the voters for more than 10%. So we're going to have to make adjustments down the road. Uh, I think we're, we're going to have to do some reductions, uh, be as creative as possible. We've got to get that uh, override uh, it, before fiscal in fiscal June of 23, you know, down to around 10 percent. So we've presented the budgets before you. Uh, we've made some minor trims, as I've said before, and I ask for your support. And of course, we stand ready to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, this is, we're gonna go through the, um, the budget as we have in the past. I'll call out a budget. If someone has any questions about it or has any thoughts or any comments, please yell out hold and then we'll discuss that budget. We'll go through all of the, um, all of the budgets and then we'll go back and discuss the ones that have, that have been held. So I'll start with the Finance Committee. Anyone wish to discuss Finance Committee budget? Select Board budget. Town Manager budget. Hold. Human Resource budget. Information Technology, Com Comptroller, Treasurer Collector, Postage, Board of Assessors, Legal, Town Clerk, Board of Registrars, Parking, Planning and Community Development, Redevelopment Board, Zoning Board of Appeals, Public Works, Hold, Facilities, P 
Police services. Hold. Fire services. Inspections. Education. Hold. Libraries. Health and Human Services. Retirement. Insurance. Reserve Fund. Hold. Water and Sewer. Recreation. Ed Burns Arena. Council on Aging. Arlington Youth Counseling Center. And that's it. So we'll go back to the beginning and we'll take up the budgets that were held. Oh, did you? Okay. Ed Burns Arena. I'll, I'll put a hold on it. We get there. We'll see. Thank you. So the first hold we had was on town manager budget. Um, oh, that was you? All right. Does anyone else have discussed that budget? The second budget that was held was public works. So if you wanted to ask some questions about public works, come on forward. Mr. Leonard. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Leonard, Precinct 17. I just wondered if you could clear something up for me. On page B9, under the DPW, the amount that is appropriated for 2021 under traffic signals dash maintenance, if I read this right, it says $90,000. Here's where I'm confused, Mr. Moderator, and I hope you'll grant me a little bit of a leeway. There's money allowed for traffic signal maintenance of a different figure in the capital budget on page 34. The difference is $30,000. I wonder if somebody could clear up what's the difference between traffic signal maintenance in one budget and traffic signal maintenance in another budget. We're going to have Mr. Rademacher come forward and address that, Mr. Leonard. Uh, Michael Rademacher, Public Works Director. The funds in the operating budget are, are for uh, maintenance uh, of the traffic signals. So, for instance, you may notice. Uh, right now, we're doing some painting on the signal work on Mass Ave. So that would be the operating budget. The capital budget is for equipment that needs to be replaced. So uh, longer term investment dollars uh, that would not necessarily be operating uh, dollars. So uh, replacement of uh, signal uh, heads or uh, control equipment. So we are talking two different animals, Mr. Rodemaker. Right? Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rodemaker. Thank you, Mr. Leonard. Anyone else on public works? Okay, see. Seeing none, the next budget to held was police services. Someone wish to discuss it? Sir. Weinstein. Hi. Um, 
Jordan Weinstein, Precinct uh, 21. Um, I have a question to begin with, uh, a couple of questions, I guess. The, the budget for the police is the single largest uh, budget item under the direction of the town manager, receiving more than around eight and a half million dollars currently per year. Um, when it's broken down and you look at the pay raises that are being proposed for 2021, it looks as if, for example, the patrol officers, the beat cops, are going to, are being proposed, it's being recommended that they receive a 1.25% um, pay raise for 2021. Those above it, uh, captains will, are earmarked, if this is passed, to receive an 8.17% raise. 8.17% versus 1.25. The sergeants are in line to receive a 6.55% raise in the year. And the lieutenants are in line to receive a 5.77% raise. Everybody else is really down uh, in the single digits, maybe uh, the administrative assistant, one of them, who only makes about 60 grand a year anyway, is due for a 5%. But my question is, what, what's, what's responsible for the wide differences um, in the percentages of pay increases that are being proposed? And then I have a, a follow-up. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Tosti? The ranking officers, captains, lieutenants, sergeants, uh, have all have a collective bargaining agreement. So they're getting the raises from the collective bargaining agreement. Uh, the patrolmen have not settled. So uh, I think they've not settled uh, for this is their third year and they're going to arbitration. Uh, therefore, uh, that's the reason, one of the reasons theirs is so low and the others are, are a little bit higher. Um, most of this that's happening there is actually step increases uh, so you get new patrolmen in, and they do get some step increases there. But I think that's the major factor. Patrolmen simply haven't settled their contract yet. Could I ask follow-up while you're still there? Um, you, you say it's a little bit higher, but I've, I've been a union negotiator, and I've worked on at least two collective bargaining agreements where the expectation is somewhere around 2 to 3% a year. Um, are you telling me that the collective bargaining agreement that the city, uh, that the town has signed requires 8.17% increase for the three captains? Mr. Pooler is gonna address that as well, Al. Unless you wanna address it. Evening, Sandy Pooler, Deputy Town Manager. Um, and I, along with the HR director, sit on the bargaining team for the town. Um, what uh, Al Tosti said was correct in that one union has an agreement and the other doesn't. The other difference is that a year ago, town meeting approved the agreement for the uh, ranking officers. Um, it was a separate article under our collective bargaining article. So it does not show up in the base for the FY 2020 police budget uh, or for the salaries for those superior officers because it was not voted in the police budget last year. It was voted under the collective bargaining. So what you're seeing is a two-year increase instead of a one-year increase for those uh, captains, lieutenants, and sergeants. And um, then for the patrol officers, as Al Tosti said, we are unfortunately in uh, an arbitration situation with them, and uh, we will have to see how that comes out, uh, most likely this fall. So it, if I hear you correctly, then you would take these percentages and divide by two. So for the one year, then it would be for the captains, four approximately 4%. That's correct, and, and in part, uh, part of their agreement from last year, as you may remember, is that they restructured their step system. So some of them had already maxed out, so uh, they reached a new step system. So some of them were able to get steps where they hadn't before. Okay, thank you. Mr. Moderator. Yes, sir. Am I, uh, would I uh, be out of line to uh, make a motion right now? 
Well, we vote budgets as a whole. So we vote the budget as a whole. We don't change line items within the budget. That's not within a town meeting's prerogative. So I can't move to adjust any of these figures? Not the individual line item figures. We only, as town meeting, our prerogative is only to vote the bottom line figure. Oh. Then. So in this case, salaries and benefits, 181,262, as I see it. No, it'd be the whole, hold on a sec. It'd be the whole eight million four fifty one budget. That we we are as town meeting members are allowed to vote on. Personnel matters not within the confines of town okay. meetings. Can I make wheelhouse. a motion to reduce the percentage of uh, a pers of an amount of the eight million dollar overall budget to achieve my goal? Well, so you're putting me in a difficult spot here, Jordan. Um, if, if you wanted to make a motion to amend a budget, that was supposed to be done by last Friday. Um, and I, I, I'd rather not, but if you want to make a motion, can make it, but I'm hoping everyone votes you down because you didn't follow my rules. <laughs> well, I would like to make a motion. Well, you put it in writing. I'd like to uh, articulate it right now. We need it in writing. We need three copies in writing for the clerk, myself, and, and, and the keeper of the records forever. What if I read the motion and handed you a written version of it? I need it in writing. Okay, no question. Go make it. You write it down, bring it back up while I go to the next budget. You gonna Yeah, I, I really shouldn't consider it because you're like a day late and a dollar short. Now you can go sit on the other side of um, Timor, write your motion out. Then I'll decide whether I want to consider it or not because I'm really being put in a tough position here, Jordan. I have rules three days late. Yes. L Friday at 11 o'clock. So do we want to accept the substitute? I don't. No. <laughs> no, I don't think we should accept it. Because I'm not going to accept his motion. So don't even bother, Jordan. I'm not even going to accept it because the rules were the rules. And I'm within my rights to do that. We had discussed a, a different substitute motion. You knew the rules. I helped you with that one. Education, 22. Oh, and excuse me. Anyone else wish to discuss police budgets? Anyone else on police? Seeing none. Education, madam. Ms. Barron. Sherry Barron, Precinct 7. Um, is the superintendent going to give a report this evening? She's, she's here. I don't know if she's going to give a report or just answer questions. Okay. They did um, submit us a paper, a written report that was posted on the web this, this morning. Okay. So am I correct in assuming that the school budget has been cut by $260,000? Dr. Bodie? I don't know who he is. Mike Mason, the new CFO. 
the new CEO, Mr. Basin, the new school CFO. I'll pause your clock there, Ms. Barron. Thank you. Michael Mason, school CFO. Um, the, the, our budget was decreased by 10% of what we would have gotten for an increase, which was $460,000. 460, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, can um, someone speak to, in general, what the cuts were, where they fell, specific departments? Are they for, it's in there? Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well. And one other, one question. Um, has anyone been let go? Nobody has been let go and there's no plan to at the current moment. So no one in, this, in the system that taught this past year was let go? Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mason. Thank you, Ms. Sharon. Any other questions? Any other questions on education? Mr. Leonard. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, John Leonard, Precinct 17. Mr. Moderator, earlier this year, I, like some other town residents, attended a meeting at the town hall with regards to the Arlington High School project. At that particular time, I raised the question about security during the five-year, one-month building of the school. At that particular time, the head of the construction company basically said, we have no security signed up for as of right now, but we would like to get into, or we could get into discussions with the town for 724 security if the town desires. I'm looking at the education budget right now. I do not see anything at all mentioning about security at the school. And it troubles me, especially where if you read this week's advocate, it talks about there was a break-in at the school through an unlocked door. I wonder if there's anybody around that could possibly tell us, has security been funded either through the school budget or some other means for protection of the five-year project at the Arlington High School to prevent any problems with security? Dr. Bodie, Mr. Mason. Good evening, Kathleen Bodie, Superintendent of Schools. We actually had a meeting about that just this afternoon. Um, we are putting on some very high resolution cameras that are going to be able to look at all the construction sites. Um, after that particular incident, we've also created new protocols for how um, keys to any of the equipment are stored. Uh, we have been discussing the possibility and whether we would need to have someone um, on site uh, during the evening hours. Right now, we have cameras um, at the high school, which uh, are focused on the perimeter and the courtyards of the school. But what we need during the construction are cameras which are uh, much more uh, high resolution and can cover the entire expanse of the, uh, the project, which we which we have, uh, which are going to be put in very soon. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Leonard. Thank you, Dr. Bodie. <clears throat> Any other questions on education? Seeing none, we can move on. Reserve fund, we had a hold on reserve fund. Pass. 
We believe we had a hold on the Ed Burns Arena. Ann Friedman, Precinct 15. And this is really, um, although it refers to the Ed Burns Arena, it really is somewhat a, a generic question um, because I'm looking at the revenues um, for the arena. And given that the arena has been closed down for about three months and will likely be closed down for another three, um, mm. starting with this budget. It doesn't seem like the um, expenses and revenues are going to balance for uh, 2021. So if that's the case, how do you make up the difference? Where's the difference going to be made up? You want that, Sandy? Mr. Pooler is going to answer your question. Sandy Pooler, Deputy Town Manager, and I also have to say Finance Director. Um, so we've been monitoring that closely. You are correct that the rink was shut down in March, both because of uh, the coronavirus situation and because it needed some fairly substantial repairs at that time. I have been talking with the uh, new recreation and rink director, Joe Conley, about his plans to reopen. He does plan to reopen in the fall um, and is already talking to hockey groups about skating times and so forth. There's a correlation, obviously, between revenue and costs, uh, how long we have to um, keep the ice going, how many people we have to hire. Um, we are assuming at this point that the rink will open. Uh, it will be in a somewhat different set of circumstances than they operate now. Um, but he believes that we will be able to bring in revenue. As we go through, I will promise you we will keep a very close eye on that. I will tell you that the rink is closing out even though it was closed for a part of the, this year, it is closing out um, in the black um, because we did take measures this year to lay off some of our temporary staff who could not work once it was closed. So we will continue to monitor that. Thank you, Mr. Pooler. Thank you, Ms. Friedman. Any other questions on the Ed Byrne Arena? That brings us to the end of the budgets that will hold. We'll now take one vote on the entire budget for the Town of Arlington under Article 53 as recommended by the Finance Committee and the Finance Committee report. All in favor, please say yes. yes. All opposed? It is a positive vote, and I so declare it. And that brings us to Article 53. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to take one second. Oh, yeah. Brings us to Article 54. I'm sorry. I'd like to take one second and personally congratulate and thank Mr. Tosti, who's going to be stepping down this year. He's been our Finance Committee Chair for 27 years. He's ushered Arlington through everything, and he deserves our round of applause and thanks. Thank you, Al. That brings us to Article 54, Capital Budgets. We have the recommended vote of the Finance Capital Planning Committee of oh, a lot of money. <laughs> Mr. Yontar. Uh, there's a, a gray button right on the lower part of the shaft. Test there. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, and hello, everyone. I wish good health to you and yours. I'm Timur Kaya Yantar, Chair of the Capital Planning Committee. In past years, we showed you a slideshow and spoke at length about the capital budget. Tonight, I will be brief. I will cover five points in five minutes. First, thanks. Let me thank everyone involved in producing the capital plan. This includes town and, department, town and school department heads and the Finance Committee. 
Mainly, though, this was the work of the Capital Planning Committee's 12 members. They are listed on page 22 of our report. I want to ask those attending tonight to stand and be recognized. <laughs> Special appreciation goes to three committee members, Steve Andrew and Brian Rarig, who are stepping down after many, many years of ser service, and Charlie Foskett, who remains on the committee, but stepped down from the chair after leading us for three decades. We are grateful for the work all of you have done for our town. <laughs> Second, the report. You should all have our report to town meeting with a yellow cover. I hope you were able to look through it. We have reordered the report from past versions. All the detail is there as in the past, only we hope clearer. We have a summary on page one in which we explain the Article 54 vote on the capital budget, and we pulled the precise language of the vote forward to pages one through five. The vote covers only fiscal 2021. The rest of the report shows the full five-year plan. It covers next year and the out years through fiscal 2025. We explain our process, the source of funding, the size of the budget, and the impact on town debt. We also show an overview of the main capital programs and, and projects. Full detail on the line items of the plan is in the appendix. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Third, the past. Part of what we pay for in any year is the debt on past projects approved by prior town meetings. We are required to pay the principal and interest on those past bonds. And likewise, for this year's projects that we pay for with bonds, we will obligate future town meetings in the same way. For example, the town's largest single non-exempt debt item was voted last year, $32.2 million for the renovation of the Department of Public Works, right over there. The design for this project is complete and the work is scheduled to begin late this year. Likewise, the renovation of the community center at the Central School building is now underway. This has required some $8 million in capital plan expenditures over several years. Other recent big ticket items were for our schools and for community safety. Altogether, these dominate our non-exempt debt service. Fourth, the present. In fiscal 2021, we intend to make $11.8 million in capital acquisitions, funded roughly equally by cash, that is taxes, bonds, and other non-tax sources. The biggest items in the, public, sorry, in, the, in the budget are public works at $6.3 million, which is over half the total, and schools at 2.4 million, which is another fifth. Public Works will spend about $2.7 million on roadway and sidewalk repairs and improvements, almost the same amount on water and sewer rehabilitation, and about $800,000 on ongoing vehicle replacements. The school department will spend over $800,000 on playground renovations, $600,000 on repairs and upkeep at the Audison Middle School, and $500,000 on information technology most of which is personal computers for our students. Again, we list the major capital items in our report. They are on pages 15 through 21. Note that we did not make cuts to the fiscal year 2021 capital budget since adopting it in February. Of course, we consulted with town leaders in coming to that decision, and we agreed that making cuts would, at best, defer spending that would still need to be made later and also, in some cases, it could increase the future cost if, say, a delay in repairs worsened an asset's deterioration. Fifth, the future. Despite no cuts in fiscal 2021, we expect that the capital plan will face some pressures in the out years. This is for two reasons. One, because town revenues will be lower than prior forecasts, which flows through to the capital budget. And two, because we see p potentially increasing costs coming from several directions, such as road repair, playgrounds, libraries, and schools. We discuss these in the looking ahead section of our report on page 21. We will work with town and school departments to prioritize their requests in this tighter fiscal environment. We still believe that our long range planning and discipline will allow us to care for the town's capital needs. In conclusion, once again, we welcome your feedback and I'm here to, to address your concerns. Thank you for your time and attention. And as FDR advised all speakers, be sincere, be brief, be seated. <laughs>
Thank you. Mr. Weinstein. Thank you. Um, hi, I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry, Jordan Weinstein, Precinct 21. Um, on item 20, uh, $135,000 vehicle replacement program for the police department. I'm curious to find out the details of that, uh, how often the vehicles are replaced. Tibor. Page three on the yellow by, uh, capital planning committee. Under budget two. Sure, yeah, so it's on page three of our, of our report. It's budget item two or section two. And then you go down to the item numbers, number 20, $135,000. So, uh, we have a program of um, budgeting about this much money every year. Well, actually, it's been $135,000 for the last several years. And uh, we expect that with inflation, it will bump up to $140,000 in a couple of years. Um, it is to pay for three vehicles um, in any given year. Uh, typically, that will be one uh, marked, one unmarked um, car, and one uh, motorcycle. Um, a follow-up question. Given the financial pressures on the town and the, um, the size of the police department budget of eight and a half million dollars, the highest line item in the town manager's uh, department. Uh, was there any thought given to perhaps either not replacing them as often or replacing fewer of them? So uh, we have for a number of town departments, police, fire, um, public works, schools, we have a lot of vehicles and they run, them, they run them for a good long time and they wear out and they need replacement. And so they are all on uh, a schedule and a budget and there was no um, consideration given to uh, delaying the uh, vehicle life uh, cycle for the for police or other departments. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah, Ms. Dre. Good, e good evening, everyone. I'm super excited to be here. I'm Elizabeth Dre, new town meeting member from Precinct 8, um, and I'm learning my way, so I ask for your patience. I have a follow-up question also regarding the vehicles. So um, how often then are the vehicles replaced? What's the frequency of the cycle of a replacement? Chief, is Here that comes on? the chief. <laughs> chief Jefferson. Not chief Jefferson, wrong chief. Clarity. Clarity. <laughs> I'm looking down there at the old fire chief. I know. Good evening, Julie Flaherty, um, police chief. The vehicles are on a maintenance and replacement schedule, um, and they're usually replaced three to four years, depending on the mileage, what area of town they're assigned to. Um, a lot of the east end cars get um, a a build up more mileage than the heights cars, so it, it depends um, where they're assigned to. It's usually three to four years. And the same for motorcycles? Uh, motorcycles are kept longer. Okay. Right. So then it says, I was under the impression it was usually for one marked, one unmarked, and one motorcycle, but they're on a longer. So usually it's, um, it's two marked vehicles, one unmarked, and um, on the fourth year, if we don't have to replace an unmarked car, we'll replace our motorcycle. Okay, thank you. And the parking control vehicles, it looks like every other year, or do you have multiple of them? 
we have um, one parking control vehicle um, right now, and it hasn't, we um, haven't replaced it for six years. So this is the sixth year. It was the first year that we purchased a vehicle. So then does it look like it'll be replaced in 2023 and then again in 2025, or is that an additional one? I'm, sorry, what is your I'm on page 26 of the yellow. Um, Ms. Deontay. So the $32,000 a year is budgeted for parking control vehicle in 2023 and in 2025, which is a two-year. I think it's the second vehicle, right? Is that the, the second uh, control vehicle? Second vehicle. Yes, yeah. correct. So that will be two vehicles. So you'll have two separate vehicles. Correct. Got it. We, we usually have two parking control offices working at any given time. But now you just have one? Now Would we just have one, one vehicle and they share it. Got it. Okay, thank you. Um, and then the animal control vehicle looks like it's going to be replaced and that's on a different schedule? Correct. That is on a different schedule. That um, vehicle was replaced five years ago. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yep. Mr. Jameson? Oh, actually, Bobby Jefferson. Bobby Jefferson. Thank you, Mr. Moderator Gordon Jameson, Precinct 12. Uh, just two things to bring the body um, attention to. Um, the largest uh, budget under the manager's control is actually the water and sewer at $23 million. Um, the second one that I want to bring the body's attention to is on page 11 of the cap plan, capital plan, there's a large discussion and important discussion of the 5% rule that we use to design the capital plan. And it's, it's a really difficult uh, operation that the planning committee goes through to try to come up with things so they all space when the money is available to be used. The 5% rule, as it says in the plan, is an over 30-year history of the town. It was a forward-looking thing that was presented to the town long before my arrival here. And the, the plan is based upon 5% of the revenues. So if the revenues drop, the plan will drop too. So I want to thank the capital planning, especially those who are stepping down into lower roles or retiring for their hard work in this process. It's part of the reason we have such great facilities in this town. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jamison. Mr. Jefferson? Pass. Ms. LaCourt? Annie LaCourt, Precinct 15. I have two questions. Um, one I believe we could direct to Mr. Pooler if it pleases the moderator. Um, and that is that several times speakers have mentioned the police department as the largest line item under the manager's control. However, I happen to know that the police budget is approximately 5% of the total general fund budget. But I'm wondering what percent it is of the total general fund budget minus the schools. Sandy, do you have a clue? Do you have that ready available, Mr. Pooler? Maybe he'll parse that out while you ask your second question. My second question is for Timur. Yeah. And that is simply um, that since we are discussing capital planning budget and we are concerned about being conservative about the capital planning budget, and we know that we are facing a potential fiscal crisis in the future. Mm -hmm. Can you discuss whether or not, given that we have the 5% rule, we are committed to always spending 5%, or we have the option to delay the plan over time, if needed, based on our fiscal condition? So we have so the 5% rule, as stated, is uh, that we aim for not to exceed 5% of the town's uh, revenues in a given year uh, to be spent on capital projects. Um, this is, you know, for A, it's, it's served us well over the last 30 plus years. B, it's uh, in line with other towns and cities uh, practice in the Commonwealth. Um, we could go lower. Um, the risk of going lower 
uh, is that uh, things fall apart. And they may fall apart considerably worse than if you had kept up on uh, repair and upkeep. An example of which could be the roads. For, uh, so if you have roads that are um, at a certain level of deterioration, uh, you can just uh, patch them. If you have them falling apart significantly worse, you have to actually mill them and, and <laughs> repave entirely. So, mm -hmm. and, that, and that's a lot more money. So uh, that's why we didn't make any changes in this year's plan. Mm -hmm. um, of course, looking at what's, you know, the uncertain fiscal environment, we could consider it in the future, certainly. Thank you. So what you're telling me, Timor, is that we are being as fiscally conservative as we can when we make capital investments on a cycle in order not to allow deterioration to occur that is so bad that the replacement cost in the future is greater than, say, the incremental costs over time. Yes, I think that that's fair. I think that the, the notion is to look at it over the long term and to say that we could be um, penny wise and pound foolish by uh, making cuts now to the capital expenditures and then having them come back and bite us later on. Thank you. Sandy, have I vamped long enough? Well, I'm going to let him answer the question even though it's out of scope because it's really interesting. <laughs> so go ahead. Um, the police budget, which is at best the third largest budget behind water and sewer and DPW, is 8.3% of the non-school town budget. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Pooler. Thank you, Ms. LaCourt. Uh, you're welcome. I guess I won't make the speech that I would have made. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else wish to discuss the capital budget? Yes, sir, Mr. Deist. John Dice, Precinct 13. Uh, last year, I brought up the issue of uh, police cars and the possibility of looking at electric vehicles as police cars. Let me talk a little bit about the process of, or if you like, the lifespan of a police car. Probably 90 to 95 percent of the police car's life is spent idle, in idle, generating electricity as the patrolman sits through, through the night, for example, uh, and keeps his electronics running. So in effect, the, uh, the police car is generating the electricity to keep the uh, electronics running. It does that at a, an efficiency of about five or less percent, probably. So in effect, the police car engine is just burning up all kinds of uh, gasoline to create carbon dioxide we would be enormously benefited, in my opinion, if uh, there were a practical electric Tesla-like police car, which probably has better performance in terms of acceleration, et cetera, than a uh, uh, current gasoline police car, and in addition would be enormously more efficient in terms of generating the, the electricity, which it normally does to keep the patrolman's electronics running. So I, I, I Hope you will again uh, consider the possibility of electric police car. Thank you very much. Just to address that, I believe that um, in our subcommittee's discussions with um, the chief uh, back in the fall, uh, we did bring this up um, and they were looking into uh, at least exploring this for the parking control vehicles, which uh, have a, a lower um, wear and tear basically on them so they, they would be able to, and they're smaller vehicles too. Can we find out if any of the, if the state police, people who certify police cars have certified any larger vehicles for patrol vehicles for next year? We can look into it. Yeah, Mr. Chaplain.
Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. I just wanted to make sure I had some chance to speak at a microphone tonight. <laughs> um, my, my understanding is, so for one, the existing parking control vehicle is an all-electric vehicle. Uh, so my assumption is we'll be continuing to replace the parking control vehicles with all-electric vehicles. Uh, secondly, my, my understanding from a, from a ratings point of view, there is now officially uh, a pursuit-rated hybrid vehicle made by Ford uh, that we can take a look at. Um, I don't yet believe there's an economically feasible all-electric vehicle uh, that could be used by the police department, but now with the, um, the, the lower-grade Tesla model uh, coming out as well as the sort of rebranded and reimagined Ford Mustang coming out that are larger sedan-style platforms but with all-electric uh, batteries, I would think within a year or two's, uh, two's time we could start to look at that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tewan. Anyone else on capital, capital budget? Seeing none, we're going to now move directly. Before we take the vote, because these are two-third votes, we're also going to discuss Article 59, SOARS, and Article 60, Water. Then we'll take one vote on all three items, because it's a two-thirds for bonding. Does any water in, every year we spend, we're going to take Article 59, every year we spend, oh, this year only spending 800000 on SOARS and a million three on water. Does anyone wish to discuss either of these two budget items? Seeing none, we're ready for a vote on all three items. So one vote is going to be for the three items. These are a two-third vote. Oh, yeah. Even if it's a declared two-third vote? I thought I could declare a two-third vote under the law. Let's see if we get a unanimous vote. All in favor, please say yes. yes. All opposed? It's a unanimous vote, and I so declare it. Madam Clerk, do you certify that there are at least 85 town meeting members present and voting in the affirmative? I do. She does. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Time. That closes Article 54, 59, and 60. That brings us to Article 66, CPA, Consumer, oh, Consumer Protection Act. <laughs> Community Preservation Act, Mr. <laughs> Helmet. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Eric Helmuth, Precinct 12 and Chair of the Community Preservation Act Committee. Um, so out of respect for your time and consideration of the pandemic, I won't repeat for you what is in your reports describing the projects, except to note once again that uh, out of that same consideration, the CPA Committee voted with the proponent's consent to hold back three of the projects that were uh, in our cycle, and we'll bring those back to you when we have a more typical town meeting. And the seven projects that we are asking for your support for tonight were all time critical. Five of them were for projects that this body already voted to approve prior CPA funding for, so they're just continued construction phases. Uh, one of them in, is important to enable the timely uh, eligibility of the town to receive grant funding. And, uh, and another one, uh, and I want to acknowledge the, the leadership of Jenny Raitt from the Department of Planning and Community Development in developing an emergency rental assistance program uh, on a dime for Arlington residents who are affected, um, whose ability to pay rent is affected by the pandemic. And she invited the CPA committee to consider an additional contribution to that, and we bring that to you tonight um, as well to, uh, to do that. And so that was an emergency um, a project that we approved at the very uh, last minute before town meeting. So I stand ready to answer any questions that you may have about the recommended projects. Do we have any questions? Seeing none, we're ready for a vote. All in favor, please say yes. yes. All opposed? Unanimous vote, and I so declare it. Yes. You know, 67 was a zero. Yeah. Can you remove everything else from the table, Mr. Tosti? Yes, sir. Well, I was for both 66 and 67. Yeah, because one was a zero. Yeah. So I just did both 66 and 67 together. Mr. Tosti? I move that all other articles be removed from the table. Oh. 
Well, we're going to do. We're going to do consent agenda two, at this point. So on the, <clears throat> you have a consent agenda with several items on it. I'll read through them. If anyone wishes to discuss them or pull them off, please say it. hold. Um, Article 48, position reclassification. 49, collective bargaining. 51, revolving funds. 52, endorsement of parking benefit district. 55, rescind borrowing authorization. 56, appropriation bond premiums. 57, appropriation transportation infrastructure fund. 58, appropriation peg ben access benefit. 62, appropriation committees and commissions. 63, appropriate town celebration and events. 64, appropriate miscellaneous. 65, appropriate water bodies. 66, appropriation Harry Barber Community Service Program. 69, appropriation bike share infrastructure. 70, appropriation other post benefits, employee benefits, OPEB trust fund. 71, appropriation pension adjustment for former 25-year accidents. 72, local option taxes. 73, appropriation overlay reserve. 74, transfer of funds cemetery. 75, free cash. 76, appropriation long-term stabilization fund. All right, we have no holds, but if anyone wishes to discuss it, now's your chance. Seeing none, all in favor, please say yes. yes. All opposed? Unanimous vote, and I so declare it. That brings us to Article 77, Appropriation Fiscal Stability Fund. A sum of $2,024,179 be appropriated for this Fiscal Stability Stabilization Fund. Anyone wish to discuss that? All in favor of the appropriation, please say yes. yes. All opposed? Unanimous vote, and I so declare it. Mr. Tosti, can you take Article 3 off the table? Move that Article 3 be taken from the table. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Article 3 is on the table. Uh, as the moderator mentioned to you before, uh, this will be my last year representing the Finance Committee as its chair. And I just wanted to thank the Finance Committee members that I have worked with over the years for their hard work and their uh, generous use of their time and for the honor they bestowed on me for the last many years as chairman. I'd like to thank the town meeting members. Look around you. How many empty seats do you see today? Very few. I don't know what the attendance is, but I'd like to thank you for being here for your uh, perseverance, uh, for your inquisitive questions, um, and I'd like to thank you for, for your attention. I really appreciate it. You've got a lot to be proud of. And for the final time, I move that this town meeting be dissolved. All in favor of dissolving the 2020 town meeting, please say yes. yes. All opposed? The meeting is so dissolved. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. The town appreciates it. One last order um, of business. We're going to we're going to exit in an orderly fashion. So we're going to go by the front row. You guys all shuffle out. The second row, they all go. And then the third row. That way, we'll be able to keep our social distances. Go back to your cars or whatnot. Um, we urge you not to hang around and have discussions in the parking lot to maintain social distances and safety. Thank you all very much for coming. We appreciate it. And I think this is a record short town meeting, 8.15. Come on, Lenny. Come on, Jim. Get out of here.